All right, Justin, A through Z. L. I don't think we've had an L yet. L's a good one. I like L. Um, earlier this week, the Las Vegas Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup. Okay. Indeed they did. They are the best team in hockey. Won their first championship within six years. I mean, I still think it would have been better if they won it their first year. They were in the Stanley Cup final, but, you know, but they made it back. They won it. I want to say they scored the most goals in a uh, ga- uh, series clinching Stanley Cup final since like 1920, something like that. They won nine to three. It was ridiculous. I kind of was starting to feel bad for the Florida Panthers because just. They kept scoring. They didn't even want to score at the end. They just kept accidentally scoring. They were just like, oh, no, we're too good at this. We're too good at scoring points. Damn, nine goal. Wow. I didn't know but, it was nine. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's been It's been a long six years, guys. I've had to wait a long time for this. Just ever since they announced, I've been waiting for this. And it happened. Long six years. It's like weird. I go from being a Cubs fan where it took them, up, what, 100 plus years to win a World Series, like a 100 plus year drought. And then Las Vegas gets their first one in six years. I'm on both ends of the spectrum of like longest droughts and like one of the shortest becoming a franchise and winning a championship. Outside of like inaugural teams, you know. But yeah. It's good to be a Knights fan. It's for damn sure. For damn that sure. That is pretty cool. Uh in basketball speaking, news. Speaking of oh yeah, go ahead. You're you're already you read my mind. I was, yeah, I was gonna, gonna say the, say the same thing probably. The Denver Nuggets are your twenty twenty three NBA champs. Probably the most boring team to win yeah. a championship. I mean, they're right up there with some those Spurs teams, dude. Just yeah. good old fundamentals. Mm-hmm. No drama, just good team basketball. That's so boring. But to watch. still, yeah. But still, I mean, that's their first ever championship, right? Mm-hmm. In Denver Nuggets franchise history. So, you know, it was kind of nice to see a franchise like that win one. But I know that a lot of sports analysts have been kind of talking about that, that the ratings down in the NBA is indicative of the problem that none of the bigger market teams are doing well. And yep. normally when those big market teams are doing well, it the ratings are better as a whole. Yeah. But, but at the same time, this is one of the most viewed – uh, NBA championships, I think, in like five years. Oh, really? Yeah, because hmm. it was like twelve million, right? Yeah, and I think at the height, which and at which they have had some worse years than that. You know, there was some nine million. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. Is this was the best one like in that. five yeah. years? Like viewership wise, yeah. this was the most watched uh, NBA finals in five years. You know, they yeah, but yeah it. It is always better for sports leagues when your bigger markets are in your championship games. The only time that does not directly apply is the NFL. I was about to say NFL. (laughs) Because they they luck out because they've got one game to decide it all in the end. One game, it's its own day, and it's, you know, dedicated to just that. Every other sport, you've got a possibility of seven games. You have no idea, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there. that's why it always ends up being, like, you know, kind of up and down in those. Because, like, you know, 
like a game seven is always going to get more eyes on it, regardless of the sport. A game seven is always yeah. going to have more eyes, you know, because it, it it weirdly becomes nothing else matters. It becomes the Super Bowl for that sport. When it's a game seven, it's no matter what, this is the final one championship. You're going to get more eyes. But, you know, when you've got a game five on a fuck, you know, what was it Monday night? Was it Sunday or Monday? It was, yeah, it was one. It's just, yeah, you know, like Vegas won their shit on fucking Tuesday. It's a Tuesday night. You know, like, I mean, that's one thing that kind of sucked about when the Cubs won the World Series. It was a game seven on a Thursday. Mm. I was so fucking drunk at work the next day. Like, I barely fucking slept. I was drunk when I went to work. I was wearing the same shit I wore the night before. And they're like, I'm wearing a fucking cub shirt at fucking work. And they're like, Sterling, you got to be in your work uniform. And I'm like, not today. (laughs) You think anywhere I go in this fucking area today, not in uniform, anybody's going to give a flying fuck? No, they'll probably be nice to you if they're Cubs fans, dude. That first yeah. job I went to that day, their IT guy was in the same fucking situation I was, still kind of drunk, but at work. You know, I mean, I'm just like that. Come on, get out of here with that shit. They didn't win on a Thursday. What day did they win on? Because the parade was on a Friday. They went on a Wednesday. Wednesday They went on a Wednesday. Yeah. They went on a Wednesday because the next day at work, I was drunk. But I had to drive to Detroit that night for work. And I missed the parade on Friday. I was so mad about that. So mad. And I was kind of confused because... uh, I got, I had gotten married like a few weeks before that happened. And uh, when I was in Detroit, I'm checking into the hotel that night. And the guy behind the counter is like, oh, yeah, congrats. And I'm fucking confused as shit because I think I was still a little drunk that night. And I'm confused as fuck. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, very confused. I was like, this fucker doesn't know I got married like a month and a half ago. There's no fucking way he knows that. That'd be impossible. No, I was still wearing the same fucking cup shirt for like 24 hours. And then I was like, he's like, yeah, that was a great game. And I'm like, ah, yes, that's what the fuck you're talking about. Because I was confused as shit. (laughs) <laughs> that's great but yeah that, that's when I was like yeah I think I'm still a little drunk uh, and I was in Detroit god Detroit sucks Detroit is the Indiana of cities which is weird because Indiana has cities in it but Detroit is the Indiana of cities And then all the cities in Indiana are the Ohio of cities. Damn. But it's the Motor City. Dude, it sucks. (laughs) Okay. You know when Detroit really sucks? When you're there instead of at the fucking Cubs parade. (laughs) That's when it sucks even more. That could be why I don't like Detroit is I was there. The only time I've ever been to Detroit, I was there instead of at the fucking Cubs parade. It was Man, November 2nd, night or 19, 2016. Yeah. And that's a, it was that was a Wednesday. madhouse in Chicago, though. I bet oh, it, it was, was crazy Dude, all that week. It was insane. They fucking dyed the river Cubs blue. Oh, it was fucking great. So people don't know, uh, every year, 
um, on St. Patrick's Day, they dyed the Chicago River green. Like, it's big old green river. And, yeah, just because the Cubs won, they dyed it a fucking, like, Cubs blue. Looked really nice. Hello, Lilith. But, yeah, that's that's my L, is Las Vegas Golden Knights. United. Stanley Cup champs. Now at this point, I mean, over the last seven years, the Cubs have won, the Lakers have won, and the the, the Vegas Knights have, have won. Fucking Tennessee needs to step their shit up. Damn it. I need Tennessee and the U to complete it. Like, they need to quit sucking. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm on like a little championship streak here. I just need within 10 years. So by 2026, I need the Titans to win a championship and I need the U to win a championship. Preferably in football, but I'll let the U win it in fucking anything. I say that they've probably won some track and field shit and I just didn't know. Because I mean college <laughs> football, let's be real. But I'm like the anti Cowboys fan right now, winning them chips. I'm like an ant. Yeah, speaking of the. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm like an anti Metallica because I got them hits. Uh, hey, they just need to return to that winning St. Anger formula. That's all I'm saying. What were you saying, Justin? What were you going to say? I was just going to say NFL memes celebrated like the. I don't know. They said like it was like thousands of days since the Dallas Cowboys last won a championship. I don't know. They sell they 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 celebrated it. I forget how many days they said, but it was thousand, and it made me sad. And then they were like, "Congratulations to all the Cowboys fans!" Like I'm like, eh, shut up, man. I hate y'all, but love y'all at the same time, dude. I'm not gonna lie. Nothing irritates me more than like NFL national sports coverage. Cause it just does not matter. Every year they will talk about the jets. They will talk about the Cowboys. And they will talk about just all of these fucking teams. It doesn't matter. They could be fucking sucking. And they're like, but why are they sucking? Because they suck every fucking year. <laughs> like, now the Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers is in the Jets. Okay, maybe. Yeah, sure. You can talk about them now. But, like, who gives a fuck about the Jets for the last eight years? They'll do, like, 90 minutes on SportsCenter. It's like, why did the Detroit Lions suck again? Because they're the fucking Detroit Lions. Like, you know what I mean? They don't even do it when they're good. When they're good, yeah, they still talk about them, but I'm just like, it doesn't matter every year. Like, every year, what's wrong with Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins has been the same fucking player for 10 years, and they're like, you know, one week it's, oh, he had a great game. Next week it was like, oh, what's wrong with him? Nothing. He's just doing the same shit he's always done. Why are you surprised again? And there's always the obligatory once a month spending an hour talking about the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Why? For what reason? I mean, it just drives me nuts listening to like national NFL talk sometimes. I just, I don't know what they like. Why? That, and they, it can't solely be for ratings. It can't be. Like, it just, it can't be. There's not that many Cleveland Brown fans. Like, you can't sit there and say that Tennessee, that fucking Nashville is a small market. Therefore, they don't get talked about. But Cleveland does? 
don't tell me it's because of their legacy. That's not even the original Cleveland Browns. They moved True. to Baltimore. The, Cleveland lost their team and had to get back the fucking team. So it's not legacy. And it's not like Tennessee doesn't have a legacy because fuck you, Houston Texans fans. They got the Oilers fucking legacy. They were the first two. They won the first two AFL championships. That's a legacy if I ever heard one. I mean, they ain't done shit since then, but hey, one of the first two. It's kind of like the Jets. What have they done since Super Bowl three? Nothing. But every 25 minutes during the NFL season, they have to have a little, like, at least two-minute Jets break. Just talk about the Jets for two minutes because, of you know, they exist. They'll be like, yeah, and once again this year, the Jets suck. Do you think it's time for a coaching change again? Well, they just got a new coach, and it's only two games into the season, but, ugh. I'm sorry, Heather. It would be a lot funnier if you listened to this shit. I just, I, I don't know anything about it, but. Oh, I know. People that listen to sports radio, <laughs> especially national sports radio, they get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. 10,000 days is what the meme said that from. If you count January the 28th of 96 to June the 15th of 2023, which is when this meme was posted. Oh, so that's, that, that's how many days ten, since you had Burger King? Oh, come <laughs> on. I hate you. I hate you. That's all right. Heather and I, we're going to enjoy it. You watch. You watch. I hope you do. Justin, I've been begging you for you to go fucking eat at a Burger King. <laughs> I've been begging you, sir. I've got my eye on it, you know. <laughs> Until you've got Eyes your on mouth on a Whopper, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Eyes on the prize, man. That's just that's how it goes. Eyes on the prize. If I eat it now, then the prize... Would be well, eaten and in your well, stomach. You will have actually gotten the prize. You will have received it. It's all about the chase, man. It's all about the uh, the, the, the Eventually, you have to get to the end, or at least get what you're chasing. I mean, <laughs> that's like it's almost like the person that's like evading, like their landlord. Because they owe rent or something. <laughs> like, yeah, I got my eye on it, though. It's fine. <laughs> eye on the prize. Don't worry. You'll get it. <laughs> Justin, you remember in the first Wayne's World how there's like a, Wayne's ex-girlfriend just keeps showing up all the time? It's like you're yeah. Wayne and Burger King's that girlfriend. And you just be avoiding it. <laughs> Can we just get off of BK, please? All right, yeah, let's start the episode. Somebody will listen to me. Nobody knows anything but you. All right, are you ready? Yes. Come on. Cinema Slayer. Slayer. Hey, Cinefans, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Slayers podcast. I am Sterling, and as always, I'm joined by Heather and Justin. And tonight we are going to talk about what we liked, didn't like, and everything in between with Transformers, Rise of the Beast. I don't remember what the fuck this movie's called. That's right. That is it. Okay. I was like, is it Rise of the Beast? Is it Return of the Beast? Is it The Beast is Back? Transformers, Beast Wars, How Optimus Got His Groove Back. I don't know what the fuck this movie's called. I would have preferred that title. That's a pretty yeah. good one. 
That sounds fun. Something. It would have been more fun than this movie was. Anyway, um, we will go uh, with this episode. We will go, as always, uh, spoiler free recommendations and scores and then into a more spoiler centric section with time codes in the description to allow you to jump around in both audio and video formats. And with all that, Heather, what are your spoiler free thoughts about Transformer 7, The Beast is Back. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I'd like to say that this is like the best Transformers movie that there is, but it's not. But it's also not the worst. I mean, there are definitely other ones in the franchise that I think are lesser than this one. But I would say overall, it's very um, lacking, I guess, like a, I, I want to say, for lack of a better word, lacking a spark. Like, it, it's an action movie. Is that pun intended? That has... <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course it was. I did that on purpose, for sure. Uh, <laughs> it's lacking spark because it's like there there are these huge mega action scenes right and they weren't bad there was i mean the ones towards the end were a little bit more memorable but it, it's almost like it's just things happening and you're not drawn in enough to really feel like super invested in what's happening so yeah i feel like that's why it's got all of it's almost like a going through the motions type of movie i think where it's doing all the things that you want it to do. And a lot of people loved what they did, but I feel like it just really didn't, um, it didn't land with pulling you into the story or not really too much into the characters even. And yeah, it, it was just a very basic type of film or action film, if you will. Um, but I do think that Anthony Ramos, who's sort of the lead in this one, I actually enjoyed his performance. I think that he was good in this. I think that him and Dominic, Dominique Fishback, who is the other lead, I think they made this movie better than it would have been otherwise with their performances and their characters. Um, because yeah, they just brought something to it that was, they, they were likable characters. Um, so I, I really thought that, I, I knew that I was going to like Anthony Ramos in this because I think that he is um, an enjoyable actor, but it, it wasn't enough to really save this film to be any, any better than what it is, which is just very basic, you know, action film, um, especially when you line it up with all of these other action films that have come out <laughs> even recently, it's just not even going to be on on the scale when you compare it to guardians or John wick or, um, you know, any of these other big action movies that just came out. What was the one we just did that came out? That was super good. Spidey. Spider yeah. Spider-Man. Duh. Yeah. You know, any of these were like so much, so much more, there was so much more to those stories and to what they did in those films that you cared about and that made them memorable. This is definitely going to be the least memorable action film of the year. At least so far it is like even fast 10 was more memorable. I would say, I mean, with the performance of Momoa, you know, but other, I, otherwise it's just really, it's going to be the last action film I would say to watch for the year. If you're just doing like a, I want to see all these action movies from the year. This is going to be on the lower end because it just doesn't stand out above anything else that we've seen in either any of the movies or in other movies that weren't Transformers that just did a lot better action scenes. So there were moments that were okay. Um, I, I'm a little split on Pete Davidson's performance in this. Uh, there were moments that I thought he was really you know, likable and fun and the moments that I thought it just didn't quite land. Um, I do feel like a lot of the humor in this movie doesn't land for the most part, but there are some moments that are okay. 
But again, another reason why it's very basic, run of the mill and doesn't stand out. So it's really, it's, I guess, okay. <laughs> That's the best I could say right now. I, I guess it's an okay movie in comparison with the other Transformer films, but it's not nearly anything that I would put on the top of the list for movies this year to watch. Justin, what about you? Yeah. I mean, that that's interesting what you said about there not being a spark in this, the, this story. Um, and it makes me wonder, is that the issue? Like, is is maybe this formula too straightforward? Is it just too easy to present transformers this way the 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 big robots do all the shooting and explosions and blowing up and stuff like that and then we sprinkle it in with some humans that with stories that you might care about and we just do that from and then you throw in something that 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 everybody needs the uh, the heroes and the villains and we just call it a day and i just wonder if maybe this does need a jolt of ambition and somebody to look at this different artistically should this be animated spider-man is just going to be <laughs> a, 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 across the spider-verse it's just going to have me looking at everything going, should this just be animated? Like, I don't know. I'm just going to have to start looking at Man. a bunch of stuff going. Well, <laughs> just real quick, it's, it's it's funny that you bring that up. The next Transformers movies is animated. Huh. Transformers 1. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is going to be uh, Optimus Prime. Um, I think huh. they're telling, like, the War of Cybertron or something like that. Um, okay. But, yeah, it's it's going to be animated. And I just, I, I'm kind of right there with you. I just kind of feel by that it's going to get like a 20 point bonus just for being animated. Like, yeah, it won't be the same shit yeah. we get in all these movies. Yeah, it, it probably will. I don't know. Are we starting to arrive to a time where, because I know it used to be just the biggest thing that you take, like these comic book characters, these cartoon shows and stuff like that, and you bring them to life. And that used to be the big hook, right? Like, Oh, look, these are favorite cartoons and Saturday morning is coming to life. And I don't know. I'm wondering if maybe we should start to look the other way and go, should we start animating more shit so we can be a little more creative? Um, Maybe it's a little bit easier for your audience to suspend disbelief. Maybe you can have a little bit more fun with your presentation because you can just draw and construct shit that humans just can't always do. So I don't know. J- just you just got me thinking about that, and that, and with the, just the excellence of Spider Man, it's just making me question a lot of things with some of these animated originally animated commodities that are now like all real life and shit or being depicted sort of in this lifelike way. But back to this movie, it's funny that we were talking about sports earlier and with this film, I keep coming back to a a sports analogy. Sometimes when a game is over, analysts and people will come on and they'll say, this was really a game of two halves. Um, the, the, this the, this game was a game of halves. You hear that a lot in sports. And just for anybody living under a rock, what does that mean exactly? Well, sometimes the first half of a game can be one way, and then the second half of the game is completely different, and it can change who wins or loses. Maybe a team was doing well the first half, but then something happens and they start struggling the second or vice versa. And sometimes you can look at two halves of 
an entire game and really draw an interesting anal- uh, analysis on the contrast of those things. Well, kind of in a funny sort of way, this movie to me is a movie of halves <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. And I don't even so much mean like the first half of the movie and the second half of the movie, though I think I would say that the first half of this is better than the second half. I think that that's probably fair to say. But what I mean by halves is this. Okay, so in this movie, we introduce two new human characters. We develop one of them really well, the other one not so much. So we sort of halfway did our job there. We introduced the the Beast Wars, the Manimals. I don't want to say that wrong. The the Maximals. Sorry. My bad. The Maximals in this story, which are, you know, Optimus Primal and some of that, that robot crew from Beast Wars. So essentially in this movie, you have two groups of robot good guys, protagonists, per se. Again, we develop and sort of do some arcs for half of them, and then the other half we don't. Uh, Then you sort of get to, like, the, the comedy of this movie. Like Heather kind of alluded to, half of it works, half of it doesn't. This story, even though in a lot of ways this mirrors a lot of the the stories of these previous Transformers movies. And if you ask me, now there are some elements that they tried to change. They tried to do some different things. They tried to have these sort of different connections with the humans and Optimus Prime and stuff like that. But again, only half of that works for me. And so then when I got to the end of this movie and they do this big reveal (laughs) with this, and they kind of open the door for this possibility of something, all I could think was, well, are y'all just going to half-ass do that too? And honestly, That's kind of how I feel about this movie. There are things in here where you felt like an effort was given to try to make it a better quality than some of the movies we've seen before. And and in some ways, it does do that. But then the other half is just, we're not developing characters. We're not getting you to care about certain characters when I think we should. If this is supposed to be about the robots, I feel like more of an effort should be made to make me care about them. Um, but, but, but I just don't know if that's the aim of this movie, really. I think it seems like the, the, the Transformers are just vehicles, <laughs> pun intended, if you will, to just sort of get us from scene to scene to get us to these action sequences, but I don't feel the care for these characters. I don't feel the fandom for Optimus Prime. I don't feel the fandom for the Beast Wars. Otherwise, I just feel like you wouldn't give half of an effort doing it. So, yeah, ultimately, uh, this is probably no surprise I just landed very mid on this movie, definitely leaning downward. Um, I think the Transformers are cool. I I loved them when I was growing up. Um, Probably the toys more than anything. Uh, the, The Transformers has always been a neat concept to me. And I always thought that the, that the character designs of, Optimus Prime and what stars scream and all them. I always thought, uh, you know, um, Megatron. I always thought that these ideas were genius ideas. And this idea of this robot that's alive and self-aware, but it can turn into something that looks like an everyday thing that they're more than meets the eye. 
I, I just wish that there were people behind these projects that felt like they really were more than meets the eye and felt like developing that more than just giving us some, we'll just do this and it'll make money shit, which is what it feels like at this point. Yeah. This movie. Oh, this movie. Um, I slightly disagree with you, Heather, about it not being the worst. And I'm not because I'm saying it is the worst. I'm saying because essentially they've only ever made two Transformers movies ever. They made Bumblebee. Very good, very original. Good movie. And then they made Transformers 1. And then they have made that movie five more times. And Transformers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7 are all the same movie. They're all the same. They tweak little things here and there, but ultimately it's the same fucking movie. And I don't know how you differentiate any of them from each other. I mean... You've got Transformers 2 with Shia LaBeouf, which is the same as Transformers 4 with Mark Wahlberg, which is the same as Transformers 7 with Anthony Ramos. Same damn movie. And the sad thing is, is Justin, you kind of you, you kind of spoke right to it. It kind of makes you wish there was more than meets the eye. Because the eye test is it's the same shit over and over again. But we were having a little conversation before. And maybe that's the magic of these movies, though, too. They make the same movie over and over again, and they just keep making fucking money. And they trick everybody into go seeing the same damn thing again. Over and over again. They might be geniuses. You know how easy it is to just take the same script? You don't have to pay a writer every time you do the movie. It's the same one. You know, you hire some intern to change like four words in the script and bam, it's the new Transformers movie. Change some names. And then you've got the special effects team where they save even more money again because every bad guy has looked the same since ever. I don't know the difference between this bag of was this guy's name scourge yeah scourge how the fuck was he any different than the fuck face from the last movie how the fuck is he any different than the fallen how is he any different than that uh that robot uh that letter nimoy played in the third one they're all the same fucking thing They even brought back the fucking scorpion robots in this. And I'll be damned if they try to say that's a different character model. That's the same fucking scorpion robot thing that was in two. Was it two? I don't remember. It was all jumping out of the sand and trying to kill Josh Duhamel and Tyrese. That's all I remember. Heather gave me a peace sign. So I'm assuming she's saying you're right, Sterling. Yeah, that was two. Be peaceful. But I mean, it, I don't know. I just, I don't see how you can distinguish this quality wise from any other Transformers. Honestly, the first one gets a slight bump just because, you know, it's the first time we saw it. So it was kind of original and fresh. It wasn't necessarily a good movie. But it was, I mean, you were seeing Transformers in quote unquote real life. And then why is it the one the one they made that is truly good, a truly just good movie? Why did that have to be the worst one at the box office? 
was just yeah. good. I mean, I don't know. This movie, I mean, I don't know. If you like, you know, some robots and then some other robots and then a bunch of just gray, shiny robots. I mean, hey, this is the movie for you. This has gray robots galore. I think that this now has set the record for the most gray robots in a movie ever. Just by so many, (laughs) just all of the gray robots your heart could ever desire. Well, I mean, and I don't remember, I, I want to say when you brought it up, like before we recorded about how it could just be because there's more Transformers to see and more Transformers just in the movie. That's why Bumblebee didn't do as well because it was just about the one. Yeah, I, and I do think that that's it. There's just less Transformers in the movie, you know. Yeah. You you sell less action figures when there's only three in the whole movie than when you've got 27 in your movie, you know. Uh, but, I mean, it's just, oh. I don't know. It's It's not good. It's not bad. It's just, it's still, it's no different. It's just, it's no different. I mean, me and Justin were joking around about how it's Transformers 2, just less racist. That's it. That's the only difference. This one's not as racist. I still feel like it's a little racist just because it's the Transformers. And ever since they went so racist in Transformers 2 that they're just inherently racist. And my cat is trying to bogart me. (laughs) Come on, dude. What are you doing? Come on. Oh, Oh, I just got clawed. Anyway. I mean, it's just... I do agree with you, Justin, and it's, it's the problem that plagues every Transformers movie that the most interesting shit they will ever do in a Transformers movie is always in the first half of the movie. That's when there's going to be lore and world building and all that shit. And then every time it reaches that midway point, they say, fuck all that. Let's just do some shit. And also, once again, how much shit is there to find in the Transformers universe? There's just so many artifacts and monuments and holy sites for Transformers. I mean, how the fuck is Earth just not Cybertron 2? I mean, exactly. And like, why is Optimus trying so hard to get back home? Everything from Cybertron's on Earth. Everything. They already moved all their shit here. Why are you trying to go back? You already moved in. Just stay. I don't get it. What what movie was it we were talking about where it felt like it was a lot of fetch quests? Like, oh, let's go here, let's get this, and then go here, and let's get this, and we gotta go here and get this. There's one movie we're talking about that did that. The Pope's Exorcist? Where it went all Indiana Jones? Or are you talking about something a little more egregious? No, no, no. I mean, was it Fast X we talked about that? Where it's always they gotta go get this item and then go get this or go stop this? Where there's some movie we're talking about that. It's just very mm-hmm. fetch questy. And yeah, I don't know. Then this happens and it's, it, it it's it again. There's always just some item they got to go find. And there's this, we got to go find, we got to, you know, I just, Oh, I don't, I just don't know how these movies keep making money, but they do. So, you know, kudos to the studio. They, they got the actual secret sauce to making a movie, like a franchise. Cause they're, they're only what three movies less than a fast and furious three movies less. And they put way less effort into it. 
And at this point, almost giving you similar outcomes at this point. Anyway. Uh, recommendations and scores? Yeah. Yep. Recommendations and score. Uh, Justin, go. Honestly, do you absolutely have to see this? No. I mean, you could just wait for it to stream, which will probably be soon. You know, it's summer movies, so I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not sure how well this did at the box office, but I mean, from what I understand, it barely beat Spider-Man on its uh, second opening run. weekend. It made 60 Spider-Man made 55 on its second week. So it beat Spider-Man by 5 million just that weekend. Man, that's impressive. That's so impressive for Spider-Man to have a second week and almost beat an opening Transformers movie. So, but but 60 seems low opening weekend for Transformers. So, I, I don't know. Uh, it, huh? I could look around and see what other openings were. Okay, cool. Please do that. Um, but I don't know. I feel like the Transformers movies always do well in the foreign markets. Th- that's probably why they end up doing so well. Cause you know, you got Japan and you, you know, places like that. And they, they love the mechs and the robots and stuff like that. So, and not just them, but you know, I, it just seems like these movies just do exceedingly well um, in foreign markets. So I imagine this will be, it'll wind up being okay, but definitely it seems like something's happening domestically. Um, but, but no, I, I, do you need to see this at the movie theater? No, there's other movies that are out right now that are better and can offer some of this action type of stuff. And I just think that they're better. Um, like Spider-Man, go see that again. Um, this is just something where I feel like you could rent this or you could stream it whenever it comes out. Nothing in the theater enhanced my experience. You know, if you watch them at home, it's going to be the same thing. You know, it's the same stuff. And then at the end, there's a little, they throw in a little tidbit in there that I guess if you grew up with the old cartoons and stuff, there's definitely some nostalgia that they're drawing from. And maybe I could see how a fan could possibly be excited about that. But the way that they did the Maximals in this, the way that they did Beast Wars in this gives me no hope for the prospect of something that they promised in the future. I just think we're going to add more elements and things. And I just wonder if any of that is going to be developed or we're going to care or is it just going to be a bunch of people on the screen? Um, so I, I don't know. I just don't know if this really changes because they seem to have a formula that they believe works and it has worked. So you're not going to convince them to change it, but yeah, I would just say stream this. I, I, I agree with kind of re- with what you guys are saying. It's not a terrible movie. Uh, it, it's not good either. It's just there. It's just kind of there to be consumed and forgotten about. So then once you've forgotten, you will pay for it again when the next one comes out. So like me and Sterling were joking, you know, offline, uh, they might be geniuses. Maybe the point is just to make you forget, to give you something forgettable. So then when you see it again, you'll be like, oh, wow, you know, another Transformers movie and just not realize you're watching the same shit. Eh, I quit rambling. We'll go. I I really am just going to sit at 50. I, I'm just going to get give it 50. 50 
little brothers that I'm supposed to care about out of 100. Uh, real quick before Heather goes. So this is if uh, Bumblebee had the worst opening at 21 million. Wow. Weirdly enough, that's the second worst is still not this. Second worst is Transformers The Last Night coming out with 44 million. Huh. Uh, then there's this one, which is officially 61. Is its official total opening weekend 61. Uh, the next one is the first Transformers opened at 70 million. Then two, three, and four all opened at either 90 or 100 million. Just opening weekend destroying shit. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Revenge of the Fallen was 107 million, I think. Uh, let me see. Let me double check that. I had already clicked away. 108 million, almost 109 million for Revenge of the Fallen opening. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon, which was the next one, 97 million. And then, yeah, Age of Extinction jumped back up to 100 and, yeah, 100 million. So this is up there with some of the worst openings, you know. Okay. Yeah, because I, I figured, because yeah, I, because I kind of had it in my head that normally it gets about a hundred or close to it when it opens. But yeah, I guess I'm thinking about some of those middle ones you talked about where. Yeah. Two, three and four all pretty much opened at a hundred. Yeah. So yeah, something is definitely happening with that, but shoot, they'll look at it and go, well, we did better than (laughs) we, we did better than Bumblebee. So, you know, Overall, though, it's it's crazy. I, I'm talking about Bumblebee like it's a failure. Bumblebee ended up making like 440 million worldwide. Okay, it's definitely the best one. Yeah, it turned a profit. So maybe people, yeah. So maybe people saw it more after the word of mouth. Maybe you know, word of mouth and people just saying, "Hey, it's actually good." Maybe it had some staying power. Yeah, I think um, the biggest knock against it is domestically it only made 127 million. Okay. Uh, worldwide it made 100 or 467 total. On a 135 okay. million dollar budget. So it turned a profit. Yeah, that's a profit. Yeah, it made sure. 200 million dollars. So it did its job. Okay. It's just yeah. they always get uncomfortable when the domestic is under the budget, even if the worldwide mm-hmm. is great, unless you get astronomically up there. If you hit a billion, they don't give a fuck where it comes from. They're just like, oh, all right, you made a billion. But, yeah, this was – that was rough for it. But, I mean, fuck, it's the best one. I think it could be that it came out out in December. That's just a weird time for, like, an action movie. Mm. in de- yeah. December 21st just like bam the rest of the world it came out roughly on Christmas like hmm. yeah that could be part of the problem is most countries it came out on Christmas okay or after so it didn't even get the holidays that they got and this was oh. after the Mark Wahlberg Transformer movies right yes yeah it was the latest one before this one, I think. Yes. So yeah. Age of Extinction had actually started the downward trend at 44 mm-hmm. million before this one. I think that that's also partially it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it what was... I was about to say is like the the non-success of the ones before it or the fact that they were very much um, not good. <laughs> Maybe people were like, no, nah, we don't want to see the other one now, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so Bumblebee kind of w- had an uphill climb because yeah, it, the people were kind of already like uh after that last one. But that makes a lot of sense. Okay, well that was enlightening in some ways. Heather, recommendation score. Yeah, I kind of lean towards um, what you said, Justin, just about 
how it's it's not the worst movie, but it's also not necessarily a good movie. It's very it's very middle of the road. Um, it, it's there's not going to be anything really about this movie as a Transformers film in general that stands out or just in general as an action film. Um, I, I actually did like, I know that technically the, the human characters aren't the thing that most people are really going to watch it for. And the stories of all of the movies are very similar for sure. But um, I did, I did enjoy the human characters in this one. I, I thought they were good. So that that kind of was what sort of got me through the moments when I was like, what is this movie? (laughs) So I I did. I did like them for the most part in the movie. Um, And yeah, but it's I don't know. I feel like they had so many big ideas for what they wanted this movie to do and be. And they just didn't deliver on that. Like the dream of it was bigger than the like fruition of it (laughs) and I think that it just kind of hurt it again going back to the what we said about there's just no spark in it like it's really just a going through the motions type of movie and but again yeah brilliant to have it be the same story over and over and yet people will see it every time and I don't know if it's like the we're hoping it's different this time we're hopeful that we'll get something better now or if it's just like you know, like, I don't know, some kind of memory wipe that they do when you watch it that just makes you forget that it's like everything else. Who knows? <laughs> but it's um, I definitely I don't I don't recommend going to spend your money in a theater on it. I recommend it if you're just looking sort of for like a background action film to have on, you know, like maybe while you're doing other stuff <laughs> or like. If you're just like, okay, I want something that's going to at least keep moving and, you know, keep me awake or whatever, like, sure. But I I wouldn't recommend it over any other action movie I've seen this year. I don't recommend it over any other necessarily Transformer films per se. So, yeah, it's very middle of the road. But I did I did like Bumblebee and I also did like um, the music that they did in this. So I guess for that, I'll give it a 55 um bumblebee is always the best transformer out of 100 nah don't see this <laughs> or do just at all Who cares? <laughs> you've seen it i'm just gonna tell you, you've seen it you've seen it like six other times you don't need to see this I mean, if it comes on TBS one day, I mean, sure, watch it. But, no, I don't. No, I can't can't recommend it. Uh, It's... It's just the same. Like, it's so weird. It's just the same fucking movie (laughs) over and over again. I don't know. I I guess I'll give it. I don't know. What's a good score? A 28? Uh, A 28. Somehow his little brother was fighting Bowser on on an original Game Boy. Out of 100. In case you don't understand that, Bowser's not on any of the original Game Boy games for Mario. Good call. I I caught that, too, and I was like, I'm a Mario fan. How dare you guys? How dare you guys? It was Super Mario Land and Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins, and and neither one of those was Bowser in it. Okay. I don't remember who was the villain in, in Super Mario Land. The original one is I can't pronounce the name, but it was some space That's being right. man because you fought him in a ship. Yeah. You're in your little Mario ship and you shooting bullets at him and you kill him. 
And then the second game was Wario. Wario. Yeah, I knew Wario was then, six golden coins. Yeah. Then Wario kind of took over. Then Mario Land 3 was Wario Land. And then so they sort of branched off. And I don't think there were any other Super Mario Land games after that. It, but then they started doing like remakes of like the Nintendo Mario games. But that was until like I think Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, I think and stuff Advanced like that. Just but when no. they started doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Because Game You're Boy right. Color, Super Mario I think Advance. Was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is it, it by chance Emperor cut. Tatanga? Is that who it is? There you go. Little purple guy. Like, I, I remember in the comics, because they used yeah. to make Mario comics way back in the day. He's like a little purple guy, mm-hmm. pointy ears. Mm-hmm. As soon as you said his name, I was like, oh, fuck, I know this guy. Like, bam. I used to have, way back in the day, there was this big hardcover book of just Nintendo comics. And like, because they used to do like weird comic strip things and all this other stuff, but it had Link comics, but it was like based on the cartoons, you know, where like Link would talk. And he's like, oh, come on, Prince, give me a smooch and all that shit, you know. <laughs> and then like Mario was based Excuse on. Excuse me, Princess. Yeah, that shit. Like the comics were based on that. <laughs> And then, you know, uh, the Mario comics were kind of based on the Super Mario uh, 3, the, the TV show that they did that was based around that game, too. Like, it was all based mm-hmm. on that shit. But they had they had some of the games, yeah, it was uh, that some of the comics, he was in it. Um, what was his name? Uh, Captain N? Remember yep, Captain the N? The Game Master. Yeah, he mm-hmm. was in some of the comics. Now I yep. really want to track down this fucking book I had as a kid. It was a massive. It was like a table. It was like a tabletop book, but for kids. But just Nintendo. I remember. Comics. I had it. Yeah, yeah, and it was just Nintendo comics. I had it. I had it, dude. I freaking had it. Oh, I'm going on Amazon, and I'm going to find this. We're going to see if I'm going to buy this <laughs> during the episode. Uh, what did I give it to? Twenty eight, right? Yeah. Um, so that makes yeah. the official Cinescore for this movie a weirdly high 44. That just seems Gosh. so high. I know both of you gave it a score higher than that. But I just, in my head, I'm like, nah, it's definitely going to end up lower than 44. No, it's a 44. That feels dirty. Uh, spoilers? Yep. Yep. Spoilers! What the fuck is there to spoil about this movie? They, it's the sixth time they fucking done it. There is nothing new in this movie. The movie... Only the ending. The movie spoil. Is that a spoiler? <laughs> Who can, knows, but that was what they wanted it to be. Anyone wants to see less than a fucking Transformers G.I. Joe crossover? <laughs> the Rock. It's two Dwayne, failing franchises. The Rock Johnson couldn't fucking save G.I. Joe. <laughs> and that was. Or in, Channing Tatum. And that was in his peak. I'm saving franchise time frame. I mean, he came in yeah. and saved. Journey to the center of the earth. He came in and saved uh, Fast and the Furious. Came in, tried to save G.I. Joe, and the and, and the world collectively said, still said, no, nah, I'm good. Can we also just really quick mention that that's the absolute worst thing that Joseph Gordon-Levitt has ever done? Like, that man <laughs> is such a good actor, and I'm like, What? What? <laughs> Like, I don't understand, like, how this happened to be, like, you were on par with all the other bad actors in this movie. <laughs> like, what? To his I'm credit, very confused. you don't see his face. I think, it, like, at the end you do, right? Nah. Something. Nah, because he's Cobra I thought at some point you did. Not directly. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you ever see Joseph Gordon-Levitt, like, straight face on, like. He's always oh, okay. got something on it's his face because he's Cobra Commander. Like, he's got to have the... Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's been a while, but I thought for like I thought that they did at some point show his face. But either way, it is uh, they do, but I think it's all mangled. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. But yeah, I'm like God, I, I barely that remember man is that talented, movie. and they made him feel like he's never done an acting job in his life. Like <laughs> what? I don't understand. That movie is the worst movie anyone in that movie has ever done. This is very correct. Let's go yeah. through the cast. Mm-hmm. Dennis Quaid, worst movie he's ever done. Channing Tatum, worst movie he's ever done. Marlon Wayans, surprisingly, still the worst movie he's ever done. Oh. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, worst movie he's ever done. Uh, Sienna Miller, worst movie she's ever done. Ray Park, worst movie he's ever done. Uh Arnold Vosloo. That's what I was trying to remember. Um, the guy that played the mummy in the mummy movies. Worst movie he's ever done. It's just one big pile of the worst movies any of these fuckers have ever done. So. And they went, you know what we need? Yeah. Dude, and it's funny because they have, they have been trying so hard. To make G.I. Joe a thing still. I mean, at this point, I kind of feel like, what's her name from Mean Girls? Like, quit trying to make it a thing. It's not going to be a thing. Because <laughs> well, what? You should have been on the, the Snake Eyes with me and Heather. We raved about Snake Eyes. I forgot we did that. Or, I actually did too for a minute. Yeah. Or, or I forgot it was part it. of G.I. Joe. Uh, yeah. We, we might, or we forgot about it. We did something with Snake no, Eyes. No, you did. You something. guys did. We did. You did two movies. It was Snake Eyes and something else. <laughs> yeah. 100% the best of the G.I. Joe movies, if we want to call it a G.I. Joe movie. It is 100% yeah. the same as every other G.I. Joe movie. <laughs> no, it. you know what? I will say it had way better acting. Henry Golding could save that it. movie, and it's hard. If I'm saying Henry Golding couldn't <laughs> save something... Just for me looking at him. If that alone can't well, save for- your movie, nothing can. I forgot. So you did end up seeing it. You just couldn't record that week, I guess. But there was, yeah, something happened. I was not able to record that. Yeah. Week. But yeah. I I mean, I think we both at least Jesse gave it like we at least gave it better than this movie. I think. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I remember being at least in the 50s or 60s. Listen, you guys need okay. me to counteract y'all from giving it a too high of a score. I don't mm-hmm. remember loving it. I, I don't remember. I mean, I think it was in the 50s or 60s. You know what I mean? Like it was somewhere. Yeah. There. It got more I mean, than a 37. I think we liked it. That is my I think we liked it because we were talking about like, why is he fighting a big snake? Yeah. And, you know, there were just something we liked. Yeah, the snake Golding, made no but, sense. Yeah, but we were like, because <laughs> snake eyes, is that's not snake? what snake eyes was. And they made <laughs> yeah. that what it was. Like, it was so weird. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> but you already did the like reason for the snake eyes. Why did you have him fight an actual giant snake? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is such so a yeah. 1980s cartoon way of explaining things. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, he's named Snake Eyes because he fought that big snake and stabbed his eyes. Like, <laughs> oh, why is that? But guy the fact in- that that wasn't even why, like they did the whole reason why. I know, the, but I'm just saying dice. that's still just the way they did shit in the 1980s. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. Oh, why is that guy named helicopter? Oh, because he flies helicopters. Like, why is that guy <laughs> named snake eyes? Because every time he rolls dice, it's just two ones every time. Like, they, it's just <laughs> they have to be like on the nose every time. They're no Frankie Mermaid, that's for sure, you know. Frankie fucking Mermaid, man. <laughs> Greatest Frankie fucking name and character ever. Oh, man. Like, the reason for that was way more creative than any names of any G.I. Joe people or anything. Because I'd be swimming in bitches. Frankie fucking Mermaid. I kind of <laughs> want to get that tattoo. I want to get, like, a slightly chubby guy mermaid tattoo and just have it say Frankie fucking mermaid 
do it. Oh man, I'm gonna. I need to watch that movie this weekend. I'm gonna watch <laughs> Velocipaster Pastor this weekend. <laughs> that that movie's such a joy. It is. It is such a joy. And what was the other one about her? Like the the lady's like job was something. The way she said it was really funny. Like a oh, I don't remember what she called herself. Are you talking oh. about the sex worker? Yeah. What, what did she say though? There was like a line in it that was really funny about how she said it. Something about how she's training to be a doctor or something like a lawyer, lawyer. I think. Yeah. So it was like a, I'm a lawyer. I think they call her a lawyer hooker or something. Yes. <laughs> I think something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, revisit that. <laughs> and, and 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 the thing is, Cine fans is. Not this, not the next episode after that, but the the episode after that. So two episodes down the line, you guys are gonna get a very special treat in that episode, and I that treat. What it, it, it's a movie that's gonna be in it, and I've seen it. And Heather and Justin haven't, and I am so excited that they have to watch it. It's going to be glorious. Anyway, um, back to this movie. Uh, yeah, they just who gives a fuck? They're all, G.I. Joe, and you're just like, no one cares. <laughs> but also, like, has death had any less meaning in a franchise of movies than in the Transformers movies? Every fucking person and character in these movies has died no less than 47 times. <laughs> yep. And on top of this, this movie being a slight prequel to the other movies, was the Bumblebee death not the dumbest fucking thing ever? Like, Bumblebee died, and you're like, oh, no, Bumblebee's dead. But, you know, he's alive in the five movies that take place canonically after this, so I'm pretty sure he's going to end up being fine. And lo and behold, into the movie, Weird MacGuffin energized energon oh well, that's a fucking hard thing to say energized energon um that's like an <laughs> acting ec- exercise yeah um you know like the speech things like you gotta say to get your tongue worked out it's that shit uh yeah but yeah and it comes back and then mirage dies and comes back No less than four minutes later. Like, if there has ever been a more meaningless death in a movie, it's bringing somebody back four minutes later. (laughs) For no reason. The only exception to that rule is Dungeons and Dragons. But there was purpose to that. Jasta hasn't seen it yet. Don't spoil anything. But, but no, it, that but serves no, a d- different purpose, though. Yeah, that serves a different purpose, uh, because that's that's a resurrection that means something else. So I, that's different. It's it, it's just in this one, it's like apparently you can just rebuild build transformers. You just rebuild them. It's fine. So apparently that means transformers are legitimately just made out of whatever. That if, you know... So does that mean if they're, like, driving and their tire pops in car form, they can just go to a discount tire like it's a fucking, like, organ doctor and get a transplant? Is that is that what they're saying in this franchise? And, like, what is the deal with... Transformers having so many lung conditions. We have the, there's another fucking giant plane fucking transformer that has a lung condition. It's just coughing all over the place. <laughs> like what the fuck is that? Did he cough something up? Like didn't he cough up like a carburetor? Yeah. Or something? Like just I was like, you're a machine. <laughs> they don't have lungs. <laughs> They just be coughing so much. 
And it really is a weird, I, I wonder if it's an inside joke to the animated cartoons where it's like a bunch of smoke and those Transformers be coughing in the smoke. And I'm like, you don't breathe. Yeah. But <laughs> does this imply that you can choke a Transformer? Can you choke one? Can you suffocate one? I guess you can. <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, I think I think the logic is like, it's the idea of like an engine sputtering. You know, but like, mm. that's still different than coughing. And these motherfuckers be coughing. But then they also like partially cover their mouth a little bit too. Are they implying that there is a transformer strain of the common cold? Like, is there is there transformers viruses and bacterium in that oil that he spat up? Is that what they're saying? I just I'm like, what the fuck ever? It's just so many things. And I mean and I have not seen a worst looking human mech suit idea thing <laughs> since A, the power suits from G.I. Joe. So are they now stipulating that the power suits in the first G.I. Joe movie are based on the Transformers mech suit from this? Because they look the fucking same. But also, it is right up there with the Predator mech suit from that one Predator movie that came out a few years back. And just god-awful, dumbass fucking looking shit. And also, like, the Maximals serve no purpose in this movie. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Why the fuck was there, like, two gorilla fucking Maximals, too? And, and also, are they implying that there's just fucking rhinoceroses and gorillas and cheetahs and hawks on other worlds that are the exact same as ours? Is that what they are saying in this movie? That those just exist other places? But also that there is just a group of transformer descendants or cousins or whatever that just go, fuck this, we're going to look like animals from another planet? At least the Dinobots had the, you know, the respect of turning into Earth dinosaurs when they got here. But what, what the fuck are they doing? And like, why was there two gorillas? Like, how fucking lazy was that? His name was Ape Line. Or Ape Link or whatever the fuck it was. It was Ape something. So now, not only is there gorillas on other planets, but they are also called apes. So... That means the Transformers not only speak English, but then got here in the past and then waited hundreds of years to teach humans English and only did it partially? What the fuck is this movie? I don't, I don't get it. And also, there's 97,000 gray fucking robots. Scourge looks no different than anybody. Those, like, it's just, they don't even try with villains at this point. They go, nah, just make it a truck and make it gray. Let's go. And I know somebody's going to be like Sterling. There was a purple and an orange one, too. That was the grayest looking purple and orange I've ever seen in my fucking life. And you know I'm right. Shit be fucking bland. Now, I will say for the, the Autobots and Maximals, they did a good job of giving them different shapes and sizes and textures, and they, they all look different. And then it's obvious they put all their energy into that and then spent five minutes designing all the bad guys. 
And they're like, not nah, just gray this shit and let's go. It's Transformers. Very easy to do a villain. Just make it gray, call it a day. That's their slogan. That's all I got. Uh, Heather, what about you? What, what what are your spoilery thoughts about this movie? Yeah, I kind of agree. It's almost like, what is there to really spoil? There are uh, Transformers fighting each other. There are Transformers that get destroyed and ones that win. Uh, the, the, you know, protagonist Transformers in the end dominate. Um, there's a human who learns a lesson and uh <laughs> and and gets there's on a transformer the that teamwork. dies and comes back to life because that's happened in so yep. many of these that too yep yep <laughs> so it's the same formula for sure of each of them and like the more you were talking about the more i'm like yeah that's very true it's the same kind of milestones that you get in each of these movies but um I don't know. Like, I feel like none of these action scenes really like wowed me. Um, The end one was probably, in my opinion, the best one. But I don't know. I feel like there's there wasn't a real like lead up to it or there wasn't a moment of like, oh, I cannot wait for these all these bots to fight each other. Like I was never at that level with any of the, the fights in this. Um, and I don't know, like, I also, I will say before this, I didn't actually know that Pete Davidson was one of the voices. Um, so, I mean, that was, it was a fun surprise. And like, there were moments where I'm like, he's endearing as the character when he's like talking to Anthony Ramos's character, but man, was he trying too hard to be funny and like not landing any of it. Like, (laughs) I just feel like it was just trying and trying to make it like the cool robot or something. And it just did not land at all. Like it was the like anti Pete Davidson, Pete Davidson. I don't know. Like, cause I think Pete Davidson is naturally like a cool guy, you know? And he was just, it was, he was just trying too hard or the, the, the mirage was just trying too hard, but I mean, I get why they needed that companion for him. Like, you know, it was it was his buddy, kind of like Bumblebee was for Shia LaBeouf's character in the first 17. But it, it was just, it, it wasn't the same. It was not the same at all. And like, I think it was cool that like Mirage could do the whole thing of, you know, making cars look like there's multiple of him or whatever. But I did also remember being like what when he just you know transformed into just a suit for for the guy to wear (laughs) like i don't know if that's is that something that happens in any form of the transformers lore yes because i didn't oh okay uh the very first animated movie transformers the movie or the transformers movie or whatever the first one yeah they have the humans in transformers mech suit things interesting okay i was just kind of like what's happening here (laughs) one big difference though those could transform the suits yeah they could actually transform they made the people transformers this is just okay a a fucking costume yeah (laughs) but it was almost like by the time that they did that pulled that trick out of the hat you know it's like I guess if that was going to help you guys win, he could have done it sooner. <laughs> I don't know. Like, but I also don't know why that is actually what was better than just Mirage being like a robot on, on his own. <laughs> like, I feel like him having a human inside of him was probably actually like a worse way to win that with other alien bots. But, you know, whatever. I get the point of why they were trying to, like, make it. They had to have Anthony Ramos do something. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. But, like, and that's the thing is, like, as much as I I say, like, okay, I liked his character. I like what he did here. 
I do. Not to say that he was doing the most or anything like that, but I, I just, I like how he presents characters when he is in a film. But, um, but I will say that, like, I do feel as much as they give you this storyline between him and his brother. And it's, you know, it's this sweet thing between them and all of that. But you don't really it kind of I think you were alluding to this a little bit at the beginning, Jason, of they kind of flesh him out, but they don't flesh out um, Elena's character, who's the other main character in this. And you're right. You're absolutely right. That is 100 percent how it went. But even with the whole fleshed out version of uh, Anthony Ramos's character, I think his name was Noah. Um they, I still don't even really feel like they fleshed him out that much. Like y- you get a little bit more, but I, I'm just trying, I guess I'm comparing it with like how much background you get on Haley Steinfeld's character in Bumblebee, right? Or Shia LaBeouf's character in the, the first Transformers movies, which to be fair, we had much more with him. So there's more to build on that. But I just feel like as much as, you know, you do get, um, you know, you, you get a little bit more of him flesh out, but it's still not a lot in general. Um, and then, yeah, it's just kind of a shame because I think they completely underutilized Elena's character and also Dominique Fishback's just acting skills. She could have been just such a, a better thing in this movie if they had used her more um, because she's great. Like, I've only seen her in a couple of other things, but she's... She's wonderful. She's a great actress. She's in that Swarm show that's on Amazon. She was in uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Like, she's she's really good. And she's very versatile. And that she could have brought something more to this. And But what they did with her character, I did like. Because, you know, she just, she just had more of a believability about her, probably, than anybody else, human-wise, in this movie. But, um... Yeah, it, other than that, it's just like, I don't know. I, and maybe that is the whole magic of the Transformers movies of like, yeah, you're right. They're, they're very like surface level characters the whole way through for the most part. But for some reason, I'm still like, I like those characters. I don't know what it is that they do, but like there's just something about them that I, I enjoy it. Um, I I think the moments between... Noah and his brother were good moments. And as much as there's a lot of like kid actors that are kind of annoying, I didn't necessarily find the brother annoying. I didn't find him to be like important (laughs) as much in the movie as they wanted to make him seem like he was, but he was, he, he serviced his role the best that I think he could considering what the script of this movie was. So it is what it is, you know, but I don't know. I also felt like the the whole thing is set in the nineties, right? Like 1994. And I appreciated like the music and all that that they did, but I do feel like there were some, I could be wrong, but I feel like they were saying some phrases that weren't actually phrases back in 94. Like, I think at one point the brother says, um, hoes over bros or something like that. Hoes before bros. And I didn't think that was a nineties phrase. I thought that came out in like the 2000s or something. I'll look it up. Maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, look it up because I was just like, why would that be in this movie? If this is said in 94, like that wasn't a thing people said in 94 that I know of, but if I'm wrong, that's fine. Um, I just don't remember hearing that until I was like in high school, which was well past 1994. <laughs> but I mean, You know, just stuff like that, which is, I mean, that is kind of the least of our concern of this movie with everything else that was kind of just very bland. But I think because of the fact that it was so basic, things like that are going to be more obvious. You know what I mean? Because the story is too basic for you to like not notice those those little inconsistencies that you might have in the in the story or the script. But I don't know. I feel like um, it's it's just one of those where you you can't, there's not a whole lot to go in depth for. Like if you were going to have a conversation about why are the Transformers movies good or why are they not good? 
there's just the very, because it's so basic, you can only say, it's just not that entertaining. (laughs) Or you could just say, it just doesn't make sense. Or like, there's just the, the amount of basic that they give you only generates basic responses from you. And that's the whole problem. I think with this movie in general is like, it's not getting any sort of rise out of you as far as excitement or, you know, anger or wanting revenge or justice for these bots or whatever. Like it's just, you're watching things happen and it just very much feels like you're watching a movie instead of being put into the world of these transformers, which is what they're supposed to be doing of, you know, you get these beast transformers and you get like all these things where there's new elements brought in, but it just feels like you're just watching a movie still instead of I'm a part of this world that they're bringing me into. So, you know, I just feel like they didn't do that as well with this film. Not that they do it extremely well with any of them, but this was just not (laughs) at this point, if they're going to do that same storyline, at least improve on that piece of it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's just too many things similar to the other movies for it to, not be something that you want to change. So I don't know. Did you find it? Supposedly 2001 is when that at least became popular slang. Now, I don't know if people were saying it before then or what, but from what I can tell, it became common slang around 2001. Okay. Yeah. Good call. Got it. But it just bugged me because I was like, I don't think that's a thing back in the 90s. <laughs> like, I just don't remember that being a phrase. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think the more I think about it and as much as I'm like, it's fine and it's very basic, but it's okay. It is. But even with that being said, I just, there's nothing I could say about this that I'm like, remember that part that was really cool about this movie? There's not really any any specific thing that you could be like, I liked that part because this was an amazing action scene and I've never seen anything like it. None of that, you know? So, and then, yeah, the whole like twist or reveal at the end about the whole G.I. Joe thing, th- that my first thought was like, but the G.I. Joe movies aren't good. Like, <laughs> why, why do we want to see two not good franchises have a movie together? Like, do they think that's going <laughs> to help? And like one's going to help the other and vice versa to make these better movies because you got to give me more foundation of good movie before you give me that. Because I feel like that is going to be a hot mess of bad if and when that happens. So I don't know what like, but you could tell they were so excited for that reveal in this movie. They were just like, just wait, just wait till they see what we're doing at the end here. (laughs) Like you can feel that that was what they were doing in this movie. And yeah, it just didn't matter at all. Like you're just like, okay, I guess (laughs) like give it a go. We'll see how that happens. But yeah, it's just unfortunately, yeah, not, not great. Like if they did, Maybe if they did a movie where they give you more of even like um, Elena's character with a dynamic with other people, like I feel like she was just kind of thrown into this and she has a dynamic with Noah, but not really anybody else. Like, I just feel like, you know, give her a little bit more or give them like more of a storyline on earth before you give them this like big task that you're supposed to care about they're helping with the fate of the you know world or whatever so yeah it just kind of was a a lot of things thrown together for a somewhat like okay time at the movie (laughs) but not giving you any like you know excellent storytelling or action in any form or fashion so that's I mean you're right there's just not a lot to spoil because they just do everything that you expect they're going to do in this movie. Justin, what about you? Yeah. So j- just back to that little theme of halves. And, and I mean, y'all 
all said good things. I mean, there's really nothing that that I really don't agree with out of what both of you said. But, like, you know, I thought that the beginning of this movie started relatively strong when we were introduced to the Maximals and there's a stressful situation and Starscream is coming. So I thought that that was maybe a good way to introduce these characters we haven't met yet. We kind of put give give you like a kind of a stressful situation. This is happening. We got to get out of here quick because they're coming. And then, you know, you have the... And I was wondering, too, why are there two ape transformers? But at least they 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 got rid of one pretty quickly. He just was going to sacrifice himself. So, I mean, I'm sure it was meaningful to the Maximals, but, you know, we're we're just introduced to him and he's dead. So kind of hard to be meaningful to another great motherfucker dying. Yeah, so it's kind of hard for him to be meaningful to us. So, I don't know, maybe you could argue there were there were better ways to maybe introduce everyone and maybe... Everybody could have just escaped. Maybe there just didn't need to be um, <laughs> one that stayed. Maybe they're just, maybe they could have just escaped and Starscream is too late. And he's like, I'll never stop looking for you. And then maybe the movie starts. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe you could have just sp- not had any deaths because we just met these characters. Maybe that would have been a smarter decision. But Overall, I thought that it was a pretty solid beginning. You know, we're meeting the Maximals, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, okay, they look pretty cool. All right, Optimus Prime, he looks pretty cool. I like what they did with his design. You know, like the special effects probably are the strongest thing about these Transformers movies. Like, when they care about the details, again, this tale of halves, because... For every, because for the main ones, it seems like they care. You see these intricate details, or I like how some parts of them look worn, or the tires look like they've been written on and stuff like that. Like you can tell that with Prime and Bumblebee and 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 your main ones that you have to look at most of the time. There's an attention to detail, but I totally agree with you, Sterling. That it doesn't feel like the villains, especially when they feel like these villains are throwaway, they don't get the attention to detail. Um, They they don't really get those touch-ups, I think, that that, that some of the the, the other characters get. And when you look at some of the graphics, and half of it is good and half of it is bad, it just feels like a lack of effort. So so you just wind up disappointed. It's like that kid who you know if he just applied himself, if he just did, if he just lifted more weights, if he just did the cardio, if he just cared and listened to the coach more. I mean, you, you've seen flashes that, that it can be really good, and, and you just wish that that effort was given to everything and not just some of it. You know, you wish that kid just wasn't just – wasn't just doing enough to get by. You wish he really cared about basketball or baseball. Well, maybe this is kind of the same way. I just wished they cared about all of it. Like, and I hate to keep coming back to Spider-Man, but the spot got as much attention to detail as Spider-Punk did. And that's what I mean. Like in a good movie, it doesn't fucking matter who who's on what side you have to equally do a good job, especially when you're talking about a hero and a villain. And a lot of these like super heroic action movies and stuff like that, we know that the the backbone of a lot of these things is the villain. And Transformers just doesn't ever seem to really care that much about the villain. The motivations are always easy, it seems. There's not this, you know, I just wish they would take more of a stab at a more complex villain, but I feel like you're asking a lot for for this. And now we're adding G.I. Joes, and so it feels like we're going to need more generic villains so we can not spend as much time with them and spend more time with the, the, the people and the things they feel like you care about, but we're not going to really make the effort to develop them either. So, man, this... 
this franchise just really has, I think, an effort problem. And I don't know if I've ever uttered that before, but I feel like it's so fitting with this. Uh, but but anyway, I digress with that. Um, I, I agree with you, Heather, in that the best character in this is um, is the Noah character. That that is the best character. That's the one that got the most development. That that's the one that they seem to have like when you're introduced to him. And what I mean by is that it felt like an effort was given with him you see the struggle that he's going through. You see where his family is. You see what he's trying to do, going out, trying to get a job. You see that his brother's sick and he's trying to, you know, fend for his family and stuff like that. So it felt like a real effort was made to get you to understand Noah and what he's going through and what he is and the trouble he's having. Uh, I, I don't know why that effort wasn't given to Elena though, the, the Dominique Fishback character. It just wasn't the same. I don't think once I got to see a flashback with her and her father talking about some artifact shit or some stuff like that, you know, she exposited that, but it's back to my, to the Justin Taylor golden rule. Show me, don't tell me. We, we got to see a lot of Noah's life and his brother and everything like that. And we saw none of hers. So I just hate it that we did that. I hate it that we introduced these two characters and it was just so blatantly obvious that the goal was to get you to care about this one. And this one is here to, to come up with a code and, you know, do cool artifact shit and make references and stuff like that and know stuff that nobody else knew. But that was it. That, that that was it. I felt like that was her only purpose. And I just wish I knew more about that character. I wish maybe there was some sort of connective or, you know, maybe some of these throwaway Maximal robots. I wish the, the one that got killed, the, the, the bird, the Michelle Yo, the... In the biggest way. waste of a Michelle Yo ever. Um, exactly. I, I wish that maybe the Fishback character, I, I wish maybe Elena had, maybe instead of stumbling onto this artifact, maybe I wish that she had met up with that Michelle Yo robot. And maybe they could have had a connection or something. Maybe they could have struck up some sort of a friendship or something. And then maybe by the time we got to to that character dying, Michelle Yeoh's character, you might have got me to care. But, you know, like Maximus Primal was hella sad. And I was like, man, Primal, I wish I could be sad with you. But, man, she could have turned into really a give me much for her. Yeah. Yeah. She like, had wings and been flying around. Exactly. Exactly. Like it could have been, you know, and maybe you could have if those characters had met some by some accident somehow, because this, you know, because Elena is nosy and curious and trying to get into stuff that she shouldn't and trying to figure out, well, what does all this stuff mean? Maybe she finds one of them by accident, their hiding place or something. And that, you know, I, I just feel like and maybe we could have gotten more of Elena's story. Also, while also connecting with one of these Maximal characters. But it was clear here that, like, Maximus Prime had an arc. And that was another thing that I guess I could say I liked. I like this whole dichotomy with him and Noah and the fact that they were the same. They have the same mindset, but they clashed. And they sort of did this roundabout thing. Now, it's kind of lazily done. It's not the greatest thing. It wasn't like... You didn't know what was going to wind up happening. And I think too early a character says, y'all are both the same. I wish that the the characters would have made that realization or maybe come to that conclusion by themselves. But, it, you know, I didn't like that halfway through it. Um, you know, Elena just goes, y'all are just like each other. And it's like, damn, that was early. Like, can we like 
have the characters have a build get that. up or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can we just like have a build up to that and like have the characters arrive to that so we could kind of pay that off? Like you could see where that was going. And I think that was a good idea. I just feel like, again, how little effort can I put into this? Oh, I'll just have a character on the outside looking in, just give them the answer. You know, I just, I, I just feel like again, the, the effort problem w- with this movie. Um, and, and so by the time we get to the end of it, I, I get what they were doing with Noah's character and the suit and everything like that. Now, how was he so expertly able to, do this? I mean, I, I I don't know. You know, it's just <laughs> he's just zero training of any of it. Yeah. yeah, zero training, and he's just going through doing this with no problem. Like it, that that was just so funny to me how he was just just an expert carrying you know? Optimus Prime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I was just like, dang man, he's just hanging with everybody. A Prime could barely get past these fools, and this fool is just dusting them. But like, right? I, it it's just that was just so weird to me. It just had me laughing, like watching it. I was like, really? And they said earlier, oh, he's a soldier. You know, he was a skilled soldier, and he did some, co- you know, some campaigns and shit like that. When did this motherfucker ever act like he was a soldier this whole time in any of the yeah. shit that was happening? What are you talking about? He he went to the GI Joe headquarters. That's a soldier. Only soldiers go there. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? I mean, just the <laughs> fact that they said he was is the only reason you know he was. That's exactly. That's it. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing came of that. No. No. Like showing of skills or anything like that. Even when they were like running from the robots and stuff, all the stuff he was doing. Come on, woman, run, and all of that kind of stuff. None of it seemed like, oh, I'm a soldier, I'm confident, I'm utilizing strategy. A lot of that stuff just looked like a civilian doing some shit, you know? I, I just don't know. So, like, maybe it's if dumb he luck, was... kind of, yeah. Like, maybe if he was more soldiery throughout the movie, then maybe by the time he's in the suit, maybe I would have bought some of it. I was like, oh, well, he's got some skills, so now his skills are enhanced. But it seemed like that fool went from zero to 100, man. And so I I just wasn't buying any of that. And the ending of this felt like just the biggest Avengers Endgame ripoff. You know, like you, you got this portal and everything's coming out of it and shit's about to go down and we got to stop it and there's a thing, there's a, you know, a thing we have to, and this whole theme about there's a thing that, that everybody wants and it can send the, it can do what it needs to do for these characters, but for the evil characters, it can destroy everything. And we got to get to the thing before they get to the thing. And then they even did just, uh, uh, this made me laugh whenever scourge got the first piece and he goes to freaking um, what was the name of the ultimate Galactus Unicron Transformer? Yeah, Unicron. Unicron. He goes to Unicron. And he goes here it is, and he goes that's only half of it. Well, why didn't you tell the son of a bitch that there were two halves? Why do you tell him? <laughs> right. Why did he know? <laughs> that's why so did he know that? Well, a they didn't know that they broke it in half. That's why oh, on that. Uh, I figured but, he would know that it could be broken in half, though. Like, wouldn't you know but that? But did he that could see happen? it on the other planet, though? He saw that it was pointy on both ends, and then he gets half of it and goes, looks the same. True. <laughs> True. Yeah, you're right. Either way, it's dumb. But I just feel like, dude, if you know about this shit, and you know that this is your access to portals and stuff for you to be able to eat worlds. It just feels like you would know that or know that that could be a thing, or you would tell your, your henchman that it's exactly this, you know, I just feel like, how would he not know that? 
how would they not know that? But, but, but you're right. Either way, it's dumb. How did he not recognize it was the whole thing? But that just, I just laughed at that part. And then, so that allowed them to extend this movie, which I think could have just been an hour and a half, like, Cutting that thing in half allowed them to extend this for another half while we have the other piece. And now, (laughs) exactly right. Like now we have another piece. So now we can extend this movie. So now we got two pieces. Ooh, what's going on? And then did it really make a difference? The villains got the, the whole thing. Anyway, the portal was opening up and it, it made no difference that the villains got it. So, why did we need two pieces? You could have cut this shit down 25 minutes. Well, you also Easy. could have just saved time if the the second half was just in the temple where it was supposed to be. It being moved served no purpose. It could have been there. Yeah. And then that little spider robot could have shown up and they could have gone, ah, oh, nah, spider robot. And they could have still ran down that same tunnel and ended up being mm-hmm. saved by the, the fucking Maximals. There was zero reason go. for it to be moved. It literally served no yeah. purpose other than them opening it and going, it's not there. But then, like, <laughs> yeah. how did they not know? They were like, oh, we have no way of knowing the cancellation code for this thing. It's like three letters. How the fuck do you not remember the three letters? You are fucking robots that have been around for centuries. I'm assuming you just remember shit. Like, it, yeah, like it was three fucking symbols. And it wasn't like yeah. those were like symbols that weren't that. Th- those are their symbols. It's if like somebody was like, hey, Sterling, that cancellation code is ABC. And then I'm like, man, they told me that like 30 minutes ago. How could I possibly remember those three letters? Fuck. Yeah, you got a point with that. And I like how this mainframe or this keyboard or whatever was perfectly human size where Elena could get it and access it and work it and figure it out. It was just so nice for a human to be able to use it. But this is supposed to be like shit that giant planet size robots and shit are using and shit. But anyway, just... These are all just funny, like, it's just all of the plot conveniences. We talked about that in another movie a long ass time ago. Just all of these plot conveniences to help move this plot along. Like I said, and it's just, it's back to the disappointed kid and the effort, man. Like, I I, I have a question real quick about this plot conveniences, though. Are you saying, Justin? that you did not like the fact that the three villain transformers showed up at the exact same time that the humans found the first half of the piece. (laughs) And are you also saying that somehow these transformers have the ability to just go, huh? We now need to go to Peru and follow those other ones, even though, because they're like, Oh, if we figure this out, you know, scourge will figure it out too. How? 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 How is Scourge going to figure it out? You had documents and, like, clues and all this other shit that he didn't have. But somehow he figured it out and got there at the exact same time you did. Exact same time. And why are they caring so much about... If this really is the difference between going home and you taking over this world so it can be consumed by your master... It just felt like they were so, like, cautious to not, we don't want to rouse a stitcher, so we'll let the humans go in there and get, all of that seemed too risky. Just get that shit yourself. Why are you sending a spider son of a bitch or a scorpion son of a bitch down there? You go down there and get it. Why aren't you trying to get this shit? Like, why, why aren't you just doing this yourself? You are practically indestructible. I just saw you whoop Optimus Prime's ass. Who's going to stop you from going down there and getting the shit? Well, why are you sending a scorpion? Like, talk about plot conveniences. I like how earlier in the movie, he's invulnerable due to dark matter from Unicron. But then just, 
out, runs out, I guess. Yeah. It just <laughs> runs out. Yeah. Just not at the end, though, because the Transformers need to win. And that's what I mean by just lazy writing. It was just like, eh, whatever. He, he, they can't beat him now, and then that we'll just, eh, we'll just have him beat him later. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it just feels just like the laziest, just easiest writing. Oh, we'll have him send the the scorp, the easily dispatchable scorpion thing down there to accost these humans, so that they can defeat that. When really, Scourge could have just walked down there himself. And th- they don't care about some sacred religious party or anything. Uh, they could have just walked all over those humans and just got the shit. I'm just, I'm just sitting there going, come on, movie. Like, do better than this, you know? And even, like, the, the Autobots with, let's let the humans do all this shit. It just felt unnecessary, well, but... like. Five minutes before that in the movie, Optimus Prime was like, that was the dumbest plan in the world to let the humans go do that. And then why? When it's the exact same plan, is he like, that's that's a good plan. Yeah, that's a good plan. It's a great idea. And I was like, oh, it is Optimus? Because two minutes ago it wasn't. Like, come on, dude. And and so, like, I, I just feel like, we are just doing the bare minimum to get to point A, to point B, to point C. And unfortunately, that that's what this movie is. And so, like, I felt like in the first half before it was so recognizable because it wasn't like all that was was just giving you enough to get to the simple shit they knew they were going to do in the second half. But I guess before I knew that was coming which I should have. I've already seen this movie enough times, but I guess before I knew any of that was coming and it was sort of introducing new characters and introducing the Maximals, I guess all of that new stuff intrigues you a little bit at first. You're like, okay, let's see where this is going, you know? And then you, it's almost like, then you just get beat down with just the same shit, lazy writing, plot convenience, just all of those things that ultimately just ruin a movie's quality. And this just had a laundry list of those things overall. And it, and it really did affect my enjoyment. So whenever they were starting to do these emotional things, I just didn't feel all of those things. I I just couldn't get with what they were doing. And like, and even though it was kind of nice, you know, the brother on the intercom, come on, Noah, you could do it, you know. If I can beat Bowser, who doesn't exist on the Game Boy, then surely you can, with no training or anything. I thought that that was going to happen. Robots. I thought he was going to be like, I beat Bowser, and if I could do that, you can do it. And then he'd be like, man, if he could beat that character that doesn't exist in this game, I can do anything too. <laughs> it Would almost- that have made you like this movie more? <laughs> Nothing could have made me Comment. hate this movie more. <laughs> no, we would have been hella hating on it, but it's just funny to talk about at this point. <laughs> now I'm saying, would you have liked it more if, like, if they would have done that comment? No, at least like calling themselves out. No, <laughs> it's never. It, they just no. The only way I could have liked this movie more is if it was a different movie. Oh, man. And I guess the last thing I'll say, so the G.I. Joe thing, I guess everybody's got to say their piece with it. I just, I mean, you introduced the Maximals in this, and I didn't feel like I didn't. I got enough of them. There were characters that I don't even think spoke. Did that cheetah thing ever say a word? He does. He says something to the effect of, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know how they fight a little bit, and then they stop? He makes some, like, little... I'm sorry, or like a hello friend or something like that. Just like a, like two words. But Rhinox, wow. the giant ri- ri- rhino character, you know, the second in command in Beast Wars. Nothing. Not Nothing. a damn word. 
Yeah, he's got and a see, he's got a voice actor though. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah, it's a guy that plays like three different characters. Oh. Uh, he also played Ape Ape Link, and he also did the voice for the other big random truck that was with Scourge. He did all three of those voices. Okay. Okay. Well, but like well, did you guys know that Peter Dinklage was Scourge? I had no idea. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I did. I mean, I, I saw that after, but yeah, I figured that out after the fact. Oh, I, I didn't recognize him during the movie, though. But like, so if you're a Beast Wars fan and you were expecting like, oh, they're going to have these characters and we're really going to meet them and get to engage with all of them. We're going to see all their different personalities and stuff like that. I think that this movie failed at that. I think it failed to introduce them properly. So how could I possibly be excited about you bringing in even more characters, the G.I. Joes, into this when you haven't shown me the ability to even develop all of these characters? You, you, you had one job, you know, you know like you, you, you had to you introduced two characters, two new human characters. You had one job to get me to care about them, and you half-assed did that. You brought in all these char- these Maximus from Beast Wars. Get me to care about them. You half-assed did that. You only really had two of them really be like a pivotal part of this movie and have speaking parts and things like that. So all I can expect from this next installment when they add the G.I. Joe stuff is more of the same. I don't see this franchise suddenly getting it right and going, hey, we've been doing this wrong the whole time, guys. Let's do it right this time. The likely scenario is, is you're going to get a lot of explosions, a lot of one-liners, a lot of stuff happening with what they think of the characters you care about, and then you're just going to have a ton of characters in the background just there, just following the group along, doing shit. And I think that's what the movie's going to be. Um, so, yeah. Can, and, 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 and I think, Heather, you probably said it better than me. The, you're mixing it with a franchise that wasn't good. <laughs> so how could I possibly be excited about any of this? It's not like, oh, man, the G.I. Joe's were great. I can't wait to see this. All I can think about is, is that big snake? gonna make an appearance from are they gonna have to beat the big snake with snake eyes or like i wonder what's gonna happen with that no yeah, I just, they'll have they'll have him beat a random snake decepticon yep you're right that'd be a big ass snake you're exactly right yes that that's oh god i hate that you're right i know that's gonna happen now but anyway i couldn't even be excited about that so it's like Oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, my gosh. But people are going to line up. Shoot, you show some 80s grown-ups now some the that they get to see the G.I. Joes and the Transformers on the screen at the same time? Oh, yeah. You'll have some people that'll be down for that. There'll be some day oneers there to see that. But I just think it's going to be like this. The Joes have found some other key that can get the Transformers home, maybe. But, but, you know, but, um, who's the planet either again? Unicron. Yeah. Yeah. Unicron hasn't given up either. And, you know, he's still coming. He wants to eat this planet. I, and now the Joes and the Transformers have to team up using the thing that the Joes found that they didn't realize they had to conquer, to see if they could conquer evil. I, I just feel like I already know what this movie's going to be. I just feel like I already know. But anyway, I digress. I'm yep. done. Anything else? <laughs> no. I think we're tapped out. Yeah. Shit, I finished this episode like 30 minutes ago. I don't, I don't know about you. I was done. I'm like, <laughs> just fuck this movie. On that note, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Cinema Slayers Podcast. 
Check us out on the internet at www.cinemaslayers.com. Cinema Slayers podcast on Facebook. Cinema underscore Slayers on Twitter and Instagram. Cinema Slayers pod on TikTok. At Cinema Slayers pod on YouTube. Uh, give us a five-star rating and review. We'd really appreciate it. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your family's friends, and tell your friends' family. And most of all, tell those dear sweet mothers, because dear sweet mothers love... Um, the 90s. That actually tracks. <laughs> yeah. I thought I stumped I, you with I, this nothing, movie. I didn't think you would get yeah. have shit. It it was a struggle. It was definitely a struggle. Uh, shout out to Plug Migo, Migo and Mundo Cho for our theme song and logos, respectively. Uh, remember here at the Cinema Slayers podcast, we were both pro slut and pro Sydney. And Justin likes to pretend that he's pro Burger King. But he won't fucking eat there, so it's really hard to determine if that's accurate or not. I look with admiration every day. I look upon it with admiration. But that's not every day. That's not pro BK, Justin. That's admiration for B. You know BK. That's not pro BK. Man, but you know, remember when Simba was looking out there with Mufasa, and he was like, "Everything the light touches." Oh, you want to get you want to get on some fucking there, pro man, lion propaganda like, to try to I'll look out to there and- prop up Burger King? <laughs> you want to get up there and just you know pound your chest and and and, and trumpet? I drive by every day and I look at the that racism and I go, of Lion King, <laughs> the discrimination, the prejudice. <laughs> You had to know he was going to do this, Justin. I know. I don't know why I did. <laughs> is, is that why Burger King tastes like shit? It's actually filled with discrimination and prejudice? <laughs> yes, those things taste great, and that's why Burger King is the best. Mm. You heard it here first, Justin. Or er, Justin is both pro-discrimination <laughs> and prejudice. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. against Burger other King. burgers because Burger King is the kingdom, man. I drive by there, and I'm like, this is my king. So are you saying that Chick-fil-A tastes better than Raising Cane's in Justin? Because it's got all that that bigotry and discrimination and, and, and prejudice, too. Uh, oh, I hate when you do this. I got all Stop day. It. <laughs> Stop it. We can make this a three-hour episode now. I'll sit and wait. Chick-fil-A celebrated Pride Month. Because they did that, don't you think that means that, did they? that their prejudice is over? When did they do that? They had a little Pride Month thing. It was like everyone could enjoy a chicken or something when? like that. It was some sort of thing they had. I saw I'll find I it. know that they had saw a, it on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, let me see that. I know they did they hired a diversity guy and everybody was all mad, even though they did that like three years ago. <laughs> and everybody just found out now. <laughs> but whatevs. Uh, you know, and as and as we always in these podcasts, these TikToks, these YouTube videos, just remember, according to Justin, Moon Knight is a Best Picture winner. Slayers. 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 I had nothing. Uh, uh, quick Sorry. update. I did find the book, The Best of the Nintendo Comic System. Cheapest one okay. I found was used for $70. Wow. You can get them new in some places for a crisp $120 plus shipping. So nice. I did not buy it yet. Might have to buy a couple of watches again before I buy that. That's a little expensive. All right. I'm out.